Um, thanks very much and, and good morning again. Um, well, I think this has been quite interesting, eh? and, and in a certain way, I mean, we're in, on day two already, and we haven't we haven't really started working or doing the real work on CMA two. But I think that's good because it's very important that we have good understanding of the general context in which CMA two will be embedded. We just saw it as well. I mean. We may all have different priorities, but in the end, the systems that we would want to implement, hopefully we can make them as compatible uh, as possible so that when maybe what is now priority two for one organization, priority one for another one, uh, becomes also addressed, that then there can be uh, exchange of information so we can have a more regional integrative view. Um, if you look at the expected results, so we want to set up a data platforms, data exchange mechanisms to support decision making, to support uh, policy making, uh, to support monitoring evaluation of uh, projects, programs, initiatives. Um, and we also acknowledge that if we can tie the CMA2 development to obligations that the countries already have, maybe there might be more buy-in for the initiative. So this session, which is a relatively short one, is also part of that general context setting. Let's maybe try to create a document out of this meeting in which we have a listing of the global, regional and national obligations with regard to reporting so that maybe the platform can contribute to providing the materials that will then facilitate that reporting job. Um, the context again, we identified unsustainable fisheries, pollution, habitat degradation in a context of changing climate and changing societies. Uh, you had the risk, the, the risk reduction issue uh, as well identified under CMA1. So that's the general context. If we think about reporting obligations, let's think about reporting at the national, regional, global level from the perspective of these issues that we want to deal with. Um, Ward provided me this link, which I thought it might be interesting to show to the public as well. Because, for example, me myself, I don't really have an understanding of what these reporting obligations are, or I don't have a good overview of it. Um, this is a website, apparently, from the European uh, Environmental Agency, uh, through which you can check per country all the reporting obligations related to, for example, uh, biodiversity. Uh, it shows templates on how reporting has to be done, what are the requirements, etc., etc. I don't think such a thing for the region exists. I don't know whether there's an interest, but I just bring it forward to the meeting because I thought this looks like quite interesting. I mean, for in order to determine what we can contribute with with CMA2, maybe we need to create an overview like this. Maybe we want to create a portal like that as well. I'm not sure who should be mandated to do it. It's just an idea, so I'm, I'm putting it forward for your consideration. Um, then pulling in some of the inputs we've received yesterday from the different presentations, we saw that there is indeed a, should I call it requirement or a desire to collect information on the I like indicators that are related to the marine environment. So that's just, I mean, for the discussion, that's one of the inputs. But I hope you can, you can complement with additional obligations or desires so that then our rapporteur can, can create the list. Um, most of the countries in the region are also signatories to the Convention on Biological Diversity. We know that there are several Aichi targets that have been set forward to be achieved by 2015, by 2020. Uh, maybe the system can help capturing this information at the national level, the sub-regional level, or maybe we want to map this at the regional level so that some of the regional governance bodies can then see how they can leverage support to help the countries in achieving those targets. Um, we had the Millennium Development Goals and we will have the Sustainable Development Goals what we have here is uh, the current goals and associated targets relating to the sustainable use of the oceans. 
not yet adopted by the governments as I understand, but it is the, the zero draft version. So we see quite some very challenging and very much interesting from our perspective targets here, very challenging indeed. If you look at many of the expected timelines by which the targets have to be achieved, that very much coincides with the CLME plus SAP or the CLME plus project implementation timeframe. Uh, I see some people smile and I think we all know why. But anyway, I mean, these are some global commitments that probably will be made very soon. So we need to see how maybe a CMA2 can help us on the road to the achievement or at least the partial achievement of some of them. Um, then there is probably also a commitment from the countries to report to Ramsar. I don't know, I'm just bringing it forward. Uh, FAO on fisheries, I mean FAO or fisheries has some expectations in terms of annual reporting from the countries. Uh, I'm not sure what international or regional or global uh, requirements exist with, regarding, with, with regard to the reporting on socioeconomic data. I do understand that at the, level, at the level of the statistics departments within the countries, typically there is a requirement to provide uh, this kind of data. And then also we have the Cartagena Convention under which there is a requirement or commitment, I'm not sure how I should call it, to uh, monitor the state of the marine environment and to produce in that context a state of the convention area report on issues relating to the LBS, the land-based sources of marine pollution protocol. Um, we got this slide here from our colleague Chris. Uh, which already indicate what the objectives of the report are. And then some of the key questions related to this. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm not going to go through it now. Maybe we can look at it again in the breakout sessions. Um, but this is just to, to indicate that there is a context to which probably CMA2 can contribute and which may be helpful in, in creating the buy-in we will need to effectively have people working on the operationalization of CMA2. Um, then quickly coming to the CLME Plus SAP and the CLME Plus project. Uh, as we are now working on our project proposal, we got comments back from the Jeff, And the Jeff did suggest us very strongly that it would be important to include a kind of project dashboard to enable clear and up-to-date feedback on progress towards all the agreed implementation targets. Um, so in a certain way also from the CLME Plus SAP and the CLME Plus project, there is an expectation to collate and to disseminate data relating to the SAP and to the project. Um, and then we also have been thinking about the following. In the first phase of the CLME project, a tra transboundary diagnostic analysis were conducted. Based on those transboundary diagnostic analysis, a strategic action program was made. That strategic action program will need periodic revisions because priorities might change, some of the problems might get resolved, or may even become worse. So the idea of the TDA SAP process is that it has a periodic revision, that it is redone each five or ten years. The way it was done in the project, it was project supported and the TDAs were typically produced by consultants, which means that it was somewhat loose from the organizations. The work that was done was somewhat loose from the organizations that have a mandate to deal with these issues. And the results from the report and the data that was collected are in a report, but they are not integrated in the knowledge systems of those organizations. So what we think is that probably it's important that through the CLME plus SAP, the TDA SAP process or its principles become institutionalized, that the region takes ownership over the TDA SAP process. We think, for example, that the SOCAR reporting is a mechanism that could replace the project-based TDA SAP process, at least for what relates to LBS. And probably we can achieve the same as well for biodiversity through SPAW, etc. 
So that's the suggestion of the CLME Plus project to develop a state of the marine ecosystems and associated resources kind of reporting in which the SOCAR related to LBS would be one chapter. Then some of the statistics produced by FAO or with the help from FAO could be another chapter. I mean, FAO, WECFC, CRFM, OSPESCA, OECS. So that's a bit the idea. This is my input to the background or to the general context in which I think CMA2 should be embedded. And with this, I think we have some time to invite also uh, thoughts, opinions, and additional contributions on these reporting requirements from the meeting. So please go ahead, shoot. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I guess this is a, a good amount of uh, information that is all condensed in, in one presentation. I this will really help to focus on the Vienna context and the needs of knowledge and 